Okay, let's talk about partial fractions. And this is a pretty advanced topic. And uh, partial fractions are generally uh, taught at the pre-calculus level. And uh, unfortunately, I'm seeing a lot of pre-calculus courses out there and other curriculum that don't really emphasize partial fractions enough. And this is a skill that you're going to need to know for calculus, okay? But uh, anyways, I'm saying here that 1% can do this. Well, you know, as you progress in mathematics, you go from algebra, geometry, algebra 2 to pre-calculus. This is naturally less and less people taking these advanced math courses. And then, uh, you know, we look at pre-calculus. Within pre-calculus, if you do have partial fractions, that's one of the definitely more one of the more challenging topics uh, within pre-calculus. So even for the strongest of math students, this can be uh, quite uh, challenging. And what we're going to be looking at here is a very, very easy level problem when it comes to partial fractions. But you're going to get a, a sense of uh, how much is involved uh, with this topic. Okay, so if you're studying partial fractions and you're kind of like confused or struggling, listen, you're right where you need to be. And uh, uh, I teach this thoroughly, I mean really, really thoroughly in my pre-calculus course. I'm going to leave a link to my pre-calculus course. But uh, let me just talk a little bit about uh, the objective here. Okay, so here we have a fraction. Technically, this is a rational expression. We'll just call it a fraction. It has a numerator. It has a denominator. And what we want to do is we want to break this up into to the sum okay, of two or more other fractions. Okay, so we're looking for uh, two fractions such that when we add them together, we get back to this fraction. So this is technically we call this partial fraction decomposition. That is the goal of what we're trying to do. We're trying to go from here to here. And I'm going to do this problem, but I'm going to be skipping a lot of things. I, in my course, I have hours, I mean literally hours of instruction on this because it's pretty involved. And, and when you run into calculus, if you are planning to take calculus or if that's an option for you um, in college, you're going to need to, you're going to have to know how to deal with partial fractions. Okay. All right. So I'm going to get to all this in just one second, but first let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I'm going to leave a link to a math help program in the description of this video, along with my pre-calculus uh, course link as well, because this is the uh, that's the course I teach uh, partial fractions in. So if you're watching this video, I, I'm assuming that you're interested in partial fractions. But um, anyways, uh, I have about 100 plus different math courses ranging from pre-algebra to pre-calculus and everything else in between. So if you're at the middle school, high school, or even college level in terms of uh, mathematics, it can help you excel. If you're planning on taking any specialty test, uh, that has math on it. For example, the GED, High Set Task, GMAT, GRE, ASVAB, Accuplacer, CLEP exam, ALEX exam, Teacher Certification exam, Nursing School Entrance exam. You get the idea. I can help you prepare and pass those exams if you homeschool. I have a very comprehensive homeschool math program that you might uh, very well want, want to check out. And if you don't have any math notes, well, you can use my math notes. I'm going to leave links to my math notes in the description of this video. However, I just want to say that I don't have my pre-calculus notes uh, ready just yet. Okay, And that's where you would find uh, partial fractions. However, um, if you want to check out my pre-calculus course, my notes are contained within the actual course. But anyways, let's get into this problem. Um, just curious, leave this in the comment section. Um, are you struggling with pre, uh, partial fractions? Okay, would you consider yourself a strong math student, um, but you're confused with partial fractions? Uh, do you think you can do this problem? If you can do this problem, go ahead and um, uh, tell me what the numerators are going to be. Okay, so this is going to break up into two fractions. I'll give you a little bit of a hint. Tell me what the numerators of these fractions are going to be if you want to take on this problem. Uh, so. Anyways, any engagement would be appreciated, but let's get into it. Okay. So, again, I'm not going to be going heavy duty into everything here. Literally, this is a, a huge topic, and it just it, we can't do, cover everything in uh, this video. But anyways, here, let's just try to get the basics. So, here is the problem. 7x minus 2 over 3x squared minus x. We want to do this partial fraction decomposition. Now... Uh, I don't want to look at it this way. I want to focus in on the denominator. I want to factor the denominator if possible. And you can see I can factor out this x, pretty basic algebra stuff here. So when you have a factored denominator here, then 
when you study uh, uh, partial fraction decomposition, there's various forms you can use to kind of um, set up how to uh, solve this problem. So x is going to be 1. This factor is going to represent one of my denominators. And then 3x minus 1 will be the other denominator. And I'm going to add two fractions, but I just don't know the numerators because we're going to call the numerators of these respective fractions a and b. And the whole entire goal of uh, partial fraction decomposition is to find out what a and b are equal to. Okay, I need to know the actual values here. And when I do, then I have an actual uh, uh, sum of two fractions or two rational expressions that I'm adding up such that the answer will be this. Okay, so again, this is not just trivial stuff that, oh, you know, you're just making up, uh, you know, hard things to do in algebra, okay, to do things. No, you need to be able to take an expression like this and break it up uh, in calculus. So that's a whole other uh, deal, especially uh, you know, like integration by parts, et cetera, et cetera. You'll definitely find out uh, when you uh, go on to take calculus. But let's go ahead and uh, continue on to the next step. But just as a reminder, okay, the whole idea behind this is to take this fraction and break it up into two fractions such that we add up. And we already know right now that these are going to be the denominators. We need to find A and B. Okay, they, We need to find the respective numerators of these two individual fractions. So let's get to it. All right, so the first thing we want to do is clear uh, the fraction. So we, we have this as a setup, 7x minus 2. That's our numerator over x uh, times 3x minus 1. We know that it's going to be some numerator a over x plus some other numerator b over 3x minus 1. Now, why do we write it this way? Again, this is just the form when you study partial fractions, uh, uh, how when you have it, when you have a rational expression or a fraction in this form, we can use this general uh, setup. Okay, but I, I don't want to go too much into this because this is a, a a lot of stuff to cover in and of itself. But I'm just telling you right now, this is the basic form. So the first thing we want to do is clear all of our fractions. So if you notice here, I have x times 3x minus 1 x and 3x minus 1, uh, the lowest common denominator is x times 3x minus 1. We want to go ahead and multiply that by each one of these terms so we can clear the fraction. So at this level of math, you should be able to you know, be very comfortable uh, with this because this is like more like Algebra 2 uh, level stuff. So, uh, But real quick, when we take x uh, times 3x minus 1 and I multiply it by this term, you can see th uh, 3x minus 1 and 3x minus 1, those factors cross cancel. And um, we're left with x, I'm sorry, x and x, everything cross cancels, and you're left with 7x minus 2, okay? So when we multiply, I'm kind of just, uh, you know, don't want to leave anyone lost here. So I take x times 3x minus 1, and I multiply by a over x, the x is cross cancel, and I'm left with a times 3x minus 1, so that's the result there. And we'll just continue through, just to make sure no one's lost here x times 3x minus 1, we multiply it by b over 3x minus 1, the 3x minus 1's cross cancel, and left with x times b, or bx. Okay, so we want to go ahead and clear uh, those fractions, so we have this expression here. Okay, so here's our a and b, and now the next thing we want to do is just go ahead and distribute um, this a right here. So a times 3x will be 3ax, and then a times minus 1 will be a uh, minus a plus bx. Okay. Now, we're on, well, just about ready to take the next step here, but I want to uh, mention we have two choices here in terms of how to solve this particular problem. Remember, the goal here is to find the value of A and the value of B. Okay, so we're going to have to use this uh, information to do that. So there's two options we have. We have something called the equating coefficients method. And then we have this other method called the plug-in method. They're both fine. They're excellent. I'm going to actually use the equating coefficients uh, method to solve this. So, um, you know, hopefully you're familiar with uh, one or uh, both of these methods. Uh, both of them will get you the right answer. But let's go ahead and see how the equating coefficient method works. Okay, so first things first, uh, when I went down here, okay, I'm going to kind of pick this problem back up. So we had 7x minus 2 is equal to 3ax minus a plus bx. This is where we last left the problem. 
Now, what you want to do is you want to um, add like terms. So you're, it does, this is not so obvious, but here, this is an X and this is an X. So 3A is a number, like 7X. And then uh, B is like another number, like say 2X. So 7X and 2X, you can combine them, right? Just add the coefficients. In other words, we'd go 7 plus 2 x or 9x okay but we're going to add this coefficient with that coefficient so uh, again it can be a little bit confusing so x and x these are these two terms are alike so i can add the 3a with the b so that's 3a plus bx minus a okay so you got to make sure you understand how i went from here down to there all right so at this point uh, we're ready to, uh, to take on this equating coefficients uh, method, okay? So let's take a look at what we have here. We have 7x minus 2, okay? We have one thing subtracting from another thing, right? Uh, and then we have this thing. It's one thing subtract from another thing. Now, look, I have an x here and I have an x here. If I'm saying these things, we're saying that they're equal, okay? So uh, what's in front of the x? Well, 7 is. What's in front of x here? 3a plus b. So this 3a plus b must be equal to 7, okay? You understand that? Because 7 is, is we're, we're saying this is equal to this, so therefore these two things must be equal to one another, okay? You have to kind of think about that for a second. Uh, so the coefficient in front of this x is 3a plus b, but the coefficient in front of this x is 7, so we must know uh, that 3a plus b, we can even write it the way, this way, 7, is equal to 3a plus b. All right, so here I have a negative 2, so that negative 2 must be the same as this negative A. Okay, so this is the uh, whole idea behind the equating coefficients. Okay, so here's a coefficient, here's a coefficient. We're going to equate them, and then we're going to equate these as well. So let's go ahead and form an actual system of equations. Okay, so again, 7 is going to be equal to 3a plus b. So let's write this explicitly. 7 is equal to 3a plus b. And then we have negative 2. That's going to be equal to negative a. So we'll write that down here. And now I have a lovely uh, system of equations I can solve, right? Two variables, two equations, super easy. Uh, so right here, negative 2 is equal to negative a. I just divide negative 1 by both sides of the equation. Uh, to solve for positive a or a, so a is equal to 2, so that's what a is equal to. And then here I have uh, 7 is equal to 3a plus b. Well, if I know that a now is equal to 2, well, I'm going to replace this a with 2, okay, right there, and solve for b. So 7 is equal to 6 plus b, or b is equal to 1. And there we go, okay? So remember, the whole objective was to, de, uh, was to determine what the values of A and B uh, are, and now we know them. B is equal to 1 and A is equal to 2. So remember, our original setup here was, this was our uh, original problem. Of course, we have the denominator factored, but we wanted to write uh, this as, we wanted to take this fraction and decompose it. We wanted to break it down into the sum of two other fractions. Sometimes this is not just two other fractions. It all depends on the fact, or it all depends on the denominators and the form. It could be three, four, it could be all kinds of different things. So again, this is a very, very easy problem in terms of, uh, of partial fractions. But anyways, remember, we, we said this was going to be ax plus b over 3x minus 1. Now we know a is equal to 2, and b is equal to 1. So let's just go and plug in uh, 2 for a, and then for b, we'll plug in uh, 1, okay? And you can see here is our final answer, okay? This is it right there. So a uh, partial fraction decomposition, this fraction, this rational expression, is equivalent to the sum of these two uh, individual fractions. Now, if you got this right, I would have to give you a nice happy face with a good old 1984 Mohawk and A plus 100%. And I'll give you a few extra stars, although you're probably a little bit, you know, older. You know, these little stars don't make you feel special anymore. But I remember being back in the, I don't know, first grade, second grade, way back in 1975. 
Um, I remember my first grade teacher, she would give the stars, but yeah, you know, those were the good old days. Matter of fact, I remember my first grade teacher smoking outside the classroom. She was probably saying, oh boy, these kids, they, they're stressing me out. But anyways, we got to have fun with this, but this is excellent. If you got this right, that's pretty impressive, but I don't want you to get overconfident here because this is a very easy partial fractions problem. And you could see it was quite involved just to even solve this, right? So again, so that's why I kind of put like 1%. You know, do I know the exact percentages? No, I don't know the exact percentages, but I do know even the best of math students will struggle with this and they'll find it difficult. And if you're not taking math notes, I mean, you know, forget about it. You, there's just too much to know, all right? So that's why... Uh, you have to take great math notes to be great in mathematics. But hope this, hopefully this uh, little video uh, helped you out. Again, if you are studying partial fractions, certainly you want to check out my pre-calculus course. The links to all this stuff will be in the description of this video. But don't forget to smash that like button. That definitely helps me out. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, hopefully you'll consider subscribing. Been on YouTube for 10 plus years, have over a thousand plus math videos, basically to advanced mathematics. Uh, so I try to spread it around, basic math, basic algebra, and more advanced things like this. But my best math help will always be within my math help program. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.